action. The one, the only. In the life of with Steve, stand your best. In the life of with Steve, stand your best. In the life of with Steve, stand your best. In the life of with Steve, stand your best. So welcome to In the Life with Steve Sanders. I'm Steve Sanders. We have an amazing show. It's 2014. We are again in the DL. We love it here. We have an amazing guest right on my side right now. We have world-renowned violinist Miss Judy Kang. Let's get it up for Miss Judy Kang. <laughs> Judy, tell us what's been going on. Talk to me. Uh, well, I'm just uh, living in New York right now and um, just kind of doing my own thing. Working on music, as always, uh, working on my second album mm -hmm. coming up, um, and just kind of enjoying that and the process of that, and working with other artists as well, collaborating, always finding new people to work with is definitely, uh, it helps me as an artist to grow, and um, it's always a lot more fun to also involve other people in, in my expression, and, and so I'm just having fun with that. Awesome. Now, we're going to get into the whole how you started and all that great stuff, but you know, everybody wants to know about Lady Gaga. And what I mean by know about Lady Gaga, I don't want to know dirt about Lady Gaga. What, what I mean by that basically is, walk us through the process. Now, if Lady Gaga goes on tour, now she's looking for a violinist. Obviously, I'm sure there's a, a, a process to become Lady Gaga's you know, violinist and go on tour. So what was the process for that, that whole thing? Well, it was actually kind of uh, spontaneous in a way. And at the same time, uh, it kind of made sense. In the end, um, basically, I was doing a lot of classical music at the time and performing, touring with that. But um, I was also doing a lot of jamming and improv and playing with local bands, right. um, just trying to do the uh, the collaborations. So in that regard, um, it just felt kind of like, okay, well, I didn't see that coming, but um, that was the extreme of, of I guess, collaboration. Um, and it was a process, basically, of uh, a friend of mine who um, I'm in a band with, actually, at the time. Um, he basically just mentioned it, that she was looking for a violinist. She's but in New York City. Isn't it weird, like, I mean, you see yourself like, as a violinist to say, I'm gonna play with Lady Gaga. Yes. I mean, isn't that like a kind of a weird clash? Well, it kind of sounds like it would be. Right, right. Yeah, and I, I think it crossed my mind as, okay, that's interesting, but uh, at the time, she was just uh, really you know, exploding, and I got to listen to her music, just like everyone else on the radio, and just hearing her her songs, and um, she had uh, she has songs with violin, so right. in, in that regard, it kind of made sense, and I was like, okay, I guess she needs a violinist, uh, and I didn't know in what context at, at the time. So I basically decided, you know, I'm, I became a fan, really. Right. I loved uh, what she was doing and who she was about. So I was very interested in just kind of exploring it and just, you know, just going with the experience of it. So now, where was the first, the first venue or the first stadium you played at? Or arena, I should it say. It was actually, I think it was Manchester, if I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, it was in the UK. Okay. So we flew out to, I think it was Liverpool, and we rehearsed for like two weeks, and then pretty much just started and and started from there so. how I mean again I don't again I don't want to turn this into a whole way to guy conversation but um, how is she like, on a day-to-day -day? I mean I was is she cool with that I'm not sure she's cool but I'm saying what is like a, a normal pre-show routine I should say well we had sound checks on, um, on tour mm -hmm. so at that point we had already pretty much set rehearsals and during the process of touring it was more so just the routine sound check. Okay. So we didn't really go through a lot at that Is point. there anything that you preconceived about her that was surprising or is it something that you thought about her that was totally different? Is there anything? I think that she pretty much shows, I think through her music and her, her you know, just her persona, mm -hmm. it really showed me that she uh, she is who she is in that sense. Right. Spontaneous, edgy, um, fearless, someone that, you know, is adventurous and is very um, flexible. So I found it to be very rewarding as a collaborator, um, supporting her because I've, I'm a very spontaneous musician. And so if I had to do something the same way all the time, it would just, 
it would drive me crazy. So I think that just being in the process with her and seeing how the show evolved, right. any show was very different. We never knew you know, exactly what was going to happen. So it was a really fun experience in that sense. What was the best venue to play? I think, personally, I enjoyed the outdoor shows. So Lollapalooza was Lollapalooza. something that stood okay. out. Uh, it's mainly due to, I think, just being able to see the, the people and, right. and, um, and just feel that energy and the interaction more so. Uh-huh. What about, did you get to play at the Garden? I did. How was that, was that, was that like, because a lot of people talk yeah. about the Garden. Yes. And it's either like their fantasy to play <laughs> or they're disappointed by the Garden. It's never mm-hmm. like... Mm-hmm. Like the, there's no middle ground. There's no middle ground. It's like, oh my God, I got to play at the Garden or... Yeah, I played at the garden. I'm disappointed. So <laughs> yeah, it was definitely not disappointing. Um, right. And at the same time, it was we had our HBO special, uh, the Madison Square Garden uh, live at MSG special there. Right. And so the excitement of that and just everything, you know, New York City, you know, just every like I live here, so it just felt right. kind of like home. Having that all be the case was really amazing. At the same time, it was in the middle of our tour, so it just felt kind of like it's another place we're playing right. even though you know there's variations mm-hmm. so it which was kind of like it was good to have that perspective so you're not kind of like freaking out right. <laughs> you know because well is there happens. any point you ever was there any point again i know you've been just such a long long time and when you hone your craft you don't ever freak out but was there at one point through the whole, whole tour from the beginning to that you were just like oh my god i can't believe i'm doing this Yes, or, I mean, or, there were moments, and sometimes it's so surreal when you're even just, like, on stage and in the middle of the performance, you're focused on doing your best, but at the same time, you're just kind of like, wait, there's 25,000 people in this arena right now, going and right. they're watching all, all of us on stage, and and I'm a part of history. I felt like I was really a part of history. No, I mean, abso- it, it absolutely. Is, so. I mean, she could, you could say she's arguably uh, today's Madonna. I mean, really, I mean, you know. I, like, she's... The ge- like, the like the next generation, like you know, like my niece gener- is like yes. like in high school. Right. She's more prone to you know watch Lady Gaga right. than she put on Madonna, a fifty year old woman doing like a virgin. <laughs> I mean, for me, I like that still, but but you know, I'm trying to say for her, it's like really, yeah. you know, really Uncle I know Steve. What you mean. I know what you mean. He's yes. a fifty five year old girl on the floor with with uh, you know fish nets doing like a virgin. <laughs> so so, but I'm saying so that was kind of right you, exactly. So she is, yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is like now the next generation, mm-hmm. I think. And I think she'll she's made her mark in history. And Justin Bieber, but that's just big. <laughs> no, that no, but she definitely did absolutely. Yes. So you're working on a your second album. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that. Well, it's kind of a evolution of all of the styles mm-hmm. that I love and I'm inspired by, which mm-hmm. is not, having grown up just as a classical artist mostly, a lot of people might associate it with just, you know, instrument like violin, and um, but I'm really just very influenced by, uh, you know, I was I grew up listening to Top 40 and uh, a lot of other artists, so um, it's kind of just a meld of, you know, my, my interests and what I want to express through different well, kinds was, of sounds. Was there a point growing up Again, we, the show we all have all different artists on. Whether you're, we have actors on, you know, well known or up and coming or, or musicians, was there ever a point where your your parents were like, "Hey, listen, you got to get a job. You can't you can't do this for all, your whole life." Has that ever happened to you? Or were they kind of pushing you the whole time to, to follow your dreams? Because that's important. To a lot of people out there, because most of our audience are are artists or art, artist driven. Yes. Uh, well, I would say my upbringing was a little bit, uh, it's, it wasn't the most c- sort of common upbringing. I mean, the, not that there really is. But there is really common, no color, right. But I think in the sense that I didn't necessarily have two parents push me and make me stay in my room and practice. I really felt like I had a, a decent childhood with um, a lot of friends and a lot of time to hang so, out. So So they were supportive of you? They were very open. My mother, she I, she's a single parent, so she was very open and kind of also my grandmother really took care of me for the first 10 years. I mean, my mom was there, but she was working a lot of the sure. time too. So a lot of that time that, you know, I had was actually very, there was a lot of freedom for me to kind of, you know, have moments of just spending time doing something else besides music and, and also the flexibility of doing, uh, making up my own tunes and melodies and just having fun with violin so I think that was really kind of the influence there and and to this day I mean I feel like um, 
I have a lot of support. Um, I think people, you know, family, ha they have their opinions, but I'm also, I feel the support at the same time, you know, I listen to, you know, different types of advice or, you know, what angle I should go maybe um, that's more realistic, right. you know, as uh, to, to survive. And, um, and, you know, I always keep that in mind and keep it in, in perspective. But I think ultimately it comes down to what I feel is my purpose in life, which is something that is not even just my own desire, but it's really something that's a, um, a calling almost mm -hmm. that is, um, you know, I, I think like everyone here is like affected in, in general uh, as human beings. We're all connected to each other. We're all, we all are affecting each other. So I feel like what I do is affecting other people. So I don't really see it even just as, you know, this is something I love doing. It's, it's more of a, there's something bigger behind it. That's very without deep, sounding, Judy. Without sounding too that's very deep. Deep. <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> great. That's great. Well, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to be back in about two minutes. All right. And now I want you to, you're going to play for everybody? Yes. You're going to play us something? Yes. From your second CD? Uh, from actually my first CD. Your first CD. CD. Uh, it's an acoustic version of a song that's on. on awesome. The so we'll be back in two minutes and two seconds. One more time. Let's get out for Miss Judy Kang. <laughs> Steve Stanius, I'm Steve Stanius, and once again, let's get up for world-renowned violinist, Miss Judy Kang. Big round of applause.
two minutes, two seconds. One more time, Miss Judy Kang. It was awesome. End the life up with Steve Stanulus. End the 